Hey everybody, welcome to Fishing Planet, my name is The Lady. Today we are going to make the final video of learning a lake and we are covering a spot technique. We've covered the SPO in previous videos, so structure, preference and observation and today we are going to talk about technique and tackle. Um, I will cover technique a bit later. Um, as you guys uh, might know, there are different types of retrievals. Uh, for each of those retrieval types, I've made videos that I'll upload as well today. Um, but first, tackle. Tackle is quite important, of course, when we want to go after a fish. Um, like I said in previous movies, fish species that already gives you an inkling as to the size and the weight of the fish. For instance, they're both in uh, usually between 2 and 6 kilograms, but at times specimens can go up as to 9 kilograms. So this fish, for instance, we would have a serious trouble if we were to catch it on a Telefloat 650, which has a maximum light weight, the rod of 2.67 kilograms. And with a inspire cast reel on it that can only handle 1.6 kilograms and then line that is even lower than that. Let's see, uh, 1.4 kilograms. Now of course this would absolutely break when we hook a fish that is 6 kilograms or up. So first off you need to determine what type of tackle am I bringing with me. Um, this will be ideal for panfish and even uh, the smaller bass. Uh, those would still suffice. But if, for instance, if you want to go after, say, a trophy catfish or a bowfin, you need something bigger. Like, for instance, here, a Nero 390. Uh, this one has a line weight of 5.5 kilograms. Uh, the real net is 4 kilograms. And then a mono 0.25 millimeter that has a test strength of 3.6 kilograms. Uh, of course, when you hook a fish that is 6 kilograms, you might still struggle, but it is not that you cannot reel in a fish of uh, say four kilograms or five kilograms it would just mean that it takes a bit longer now of course if you would use this particular setup to go off say alligator gar which can reach up to what was it 36 37 kilograms sometimes even 40 this of course would not be enough um but yeah if it's just uh, a fish that would go to say five kilograms then this would more than uh suffice. Now what happens when you go after a fish or accidentally hook a fish that is too big for you to handle? Let's try it out. So currently it is the St. Patrick's uh, Day event. Um, you got uh, the leprechaun fish and the rody bass and the rody bass goes up to 13 kilograms. Uh, I'll fish a one odd hook. You can use a two odd three odd as well by the way. Uh, bully grasshopper is what I'm using. And for this, I am going to show you guys what happens when you fish underweight. So this one has max strength for 5.5 kilograms. I'm fishing at 90 centimeters. Uh, actually, I should adjust that to 50. There we go. Let's see what happens when we hook a fish that is simply too strong. Nope. Casting a bit over uh, the fork tree there. It might happen that my bobby starts to do some uh, boogie boogie. Starts to uh, bounce a bit, but we'll see. So I hope that we'll hook a hook a roadie bass uh, pretty soon, so you guys can see what happens when you are fishing with the wrong type of uh, tackle. Now, for instance, uh, one of the things that you can pick out from fish species uh, is when you go fishing for trout. It will say very clearly that. For instance, if you go to Colorado, or uh, ooh, we got some action going on there, uh, that the fish has a very clear eyesight. That will already, or should already give you an inkling not to use, for instance, braided line. Braided line is the strongest line out there, but it's also the thickest line out there, and it oh struck too early, and um, that makes it very visible. In the water so if you want to go after trout it would be much wiser to use fluoro line which is not as strong as braided line yet it is nearly invisible in the water so that would be a very good 
way of using uh, and put it on your setup. Uh, they have your fish, fish out there, for instance, like uh, the bass, chain pike, all the kind of stuff. The, the eyesight, both in the eyesight, is not as good. So for those, if you, especially the ones that weigh a bit more, it would be very helpful to use braided line instead uh, of uh, monofilament line or fluoro line. And uh, just for simple panfish fishing, uh, monofilament is all right. It's not like uh, those have very good eyesight. All right, here we go. And that one, as you guys can see, he was about to take line. Now I can up the drag. Let's see. This is putting a lot of strength on it. Can up the drag to here. Now let's hope that this is a big sized one. <laughs> he will spool me because that's the whole idea behind it. There we go. He takes t uh, 25 meters. So this rod is actually. I'm not reeling in at the moment, but this rod would actually just be on the verge of if it can handle the fish or not. So, but this uh, does present itself with a good opportunity in teaching you guys what to do when you hook a fish like the one that I'm currently having. So what you do is you just keep the rod lifted and the moment that you see that the tension on the reel is lowering you start to reel in like so so that will be the third bar the one most to the right and then when the fish is taking line again like there you just keep the rod lifted but you will not reel in this is how you battle very strong fish when you're fishing on the edge of what your setup can handle and this might give you a chance to still be able to reel in that particular fish that you hooked now of course if it runs up straight away and just keeps on taking line and line and if it just goes through the brake system like took a meter out of it there then you can just press B and you cut your line that will leave your turtle gear uh, with less damage than if you start battling it for a long period of time uh, in a row but this is uh, very important first off you need to know what fish it is that you're going after and then you have to match your setup make sure that it is strong enough to handle a fish like uh, that you are targeting uh, so always check that your uh, rod and reel will be able to handle uh, handle the fish like this now this of course could also still be a leprechaun oh almost lost it there because it was making a, a run towards me no, it is definitely roadie bass. Not sure though if I can keep it because my uh, string can only hold six kilograms. And that is another thing that you need to, to take into uh, account that if you are targeting a specific type of fish, uh, you know that it can go up to, say for instance, the bowfin, that one average weight of between two and six kilograms, that your stringer can hold a fish of that size. I know that these rody bass can go up to 13 kilograms. My stringer can only hold a max single fish weight of thir uh, of six, so doubt I will be able to uh, to keep this one. And here you guys can see he is taking a line very quickly, just like so. He made a run. We had it to 12, and now he went running again. So sometimes you will just encounter a fish that is too heavy for you. Now what you can do is of course purchase a bigger setup. Or if you simply do not have the means to do that either uh, money wise or level wise. Um, just do not go after the fish. 
I know that it is uh, that everybody wants to go after the big fish straight away, but reality is is that you just do not have the means to uh, to get it. Now here it even goes boom all the way to 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55 meters. So before it starts to do damage, yes, let's break the line. There we go. Now at least we could see. Uh, let me put on some new stuff. So a hook and another bully grazzler. At least here, we uh, these were all at a hundred, and now they went down to uh, the line is down by three percent, the rod by two percent, and the reel by three uh, percent. At least we managed to do some damage control uh, on this. But yeah, like I said, I know everybody wants to go after the huge, uh, huge fish, but sometimes uh, it, it you just do not have the means, and then what you can do is. Um, Stop being angry about it, or you can just simply accept it and just grind your way up. Eventually, you will get to the heavier setup. Uh, I know, in particular, when it comes to events, that it is not a nice thing. That there are fish out there that everybody goes after, and that, for instance, in this particular case, uh, St. Patrick's Day event, uh, the fish is being rewarded with bacorns, and bacorns, of course, are a bit scarce in game and they're hard to come by. Uh, unless you you purchase them for real life money, uh, and I do agree uh, with you guys that they should have added a smaller weight fish so that the lower levels uh, could have a chance in uh, in uh, keeping those as well. Having that said, though, sometimes you just have to deal with the things that are being handed to you and um, not get angry about things that you've not gotten so far. All right. Now let's go to retrievals. I'll just go over them quickly um, because, uh, like I said before, uh, I've also made uh, uh, retrieval videos about each retrieve that you can do. And this is also part of the technique. Um, so, for instance, if you set speed to free, everybody knows this one already. Let's, uh, let's do it over there. Though. So I do not have to reel in a long set of line. Uh, real speed set on free. You press the left mouse button, hold it for a second, release it, wait for a second. This will be the stop and go technique. There you go. Now we can do the exact same, and I'm pressing both mouse buttons, which would be the lift and drop technique. Make sure you have your speed set on free. Press both mouse buttons, hold them for a second, release, and wait for a second. There you go, that is lift and drop. Now another one is straight retrieval. I'll show you that as well. Oh, this cost a bit further out, there we go. Straight retrieval you can do it with speed set to 3, speed set to 2, speed set to 1. Let's try speed at 2, because I'm currently using a casting spoon. A casting spoon has the tendency to go up very quickly in, uh, in water. Come on, get me straight. <laughs> of course now this one is not giving me straight uh, straight slow all right so straight slow is actually not a very good technique uh, it basically means that it is going through the water at a very slow steady pace uh, going straight forward but you want to sort of tickle the fish a bit and that does not happen when you're doing a straight slow retrieval um, so we it's that straight slow um, we want to get rid of the slope. What you do then is you just up the uh, real in speed. So we had it on two. Let's put it on three now. And there we go. Now we've got a perfect straight. Just like so. And then of course there is another technique that lets us mimic uh, an injured fish when it comes to lures. Now and this is quite a struggle and I must admit that I am completely not good at this technique. Uh, I already did the video about twitching and I'm not doing a very good job at it. In general though, you would like to have your speed set on either one or on two. And what you do is you keep pressing the left mouse button and hold it the entire time. Uh, what you need to do with twitching technique is make sure that the lure does not hit the bottom like it is doing right now. So I'm putting on it free for the moment and you just tap it every other meter 
You give the right mouse button a tap. No. There we had it. <laughs> Twitching in a <laughs> bare second. Lost the meters that we reeled it in. Let's uh, let's do it again. All right. So we cast it out all the way over there. There we go. So just give the right mouse button a tap every on a meter or so. That will give you the twitch technique. Even though it is currently saying straight. There we go, twitching. Managed to get at least one dot. So those are the retrieval techniques. Um, if you go through the water too slow, you will end up in deep with it stating that... Um, oh, I'm getting a message over there. Uh, it will indeed state that uh, the retrieval is too slow. And like I said, uh, very slow retrieval in general does not work unless you're using crankbaits, by the way. But for everything else, every other type of lure, you do not want to set speed at um, too slow. Also, you do not want to set the speed too fast because otherwise the fish they will go after it. But because you're pulling the lure more and more further away from them, they will never have a chance of biting. So never ever set your speed onto four unless you're real in line. Uh, just the, the final couple of meters. Um, but four will be too uh, quickly for the fish. So that is when it comes to technique. Uh, it is about the way that you retrieve. But it is also about the way that you battle the fish. So now, for instance, if we are... Let's give it another try. And just... Like here. Here we go again. Finding a biggie. But this will actually... Uh, help me in showing how to direct a fish. What you want to do is the moment that you hook the fish is you want your rod to have it at somewhat of an angle so you can actually steer it towards you. There we go, we've got a fish on. So as you guys can see I immediately put my rod to the right. Now as the fish comes to 12 o'clock I am aiming it to the left. Uh, right, sorry. I mixed them up left and right here. But this is actually what you want to do. So now he gets wants to dive into the reeds there for a second. Always keep your rod at the opposite angle of what the fish is. There he's jumping. Let's reel in a bit. Let's see if we can actually reel this one in. So far he is giving us some... Ooh, he is taking quite a lot of line there. He gave a little jump. Now with us having the ability to move, you could actually indeed just walk a bit backwards. And what sometimes helps as well is lift up your rod all the way in the sky. Now here unfortunately does not help. Because uh, again, this fish is simply too strong for our setup. You can actually see that the rock starts to uh, jerk a bit, left and right. But always make sure that you got your rock on an angle and then the moment that your fish is moving towards the other side, you bend your rock the other way around. And if you're struggling with the last couple of meters, say at 10 meters, try walking. Walking definitely helps. The moment that you land the fish or just simply somewhat drag it, Onto the onto the shore, then you'll be able to uh, to lift it up. So you just walk backwards in that case. Now, of course, with this one being quite obnoxious and trying to run away from us, what will be very handy is to try and get a couple of meters on him by walking towards it. What we are currently doing now, I can't move any further, so I need to wait. Until he comes towards us again. There we go. Um, let's try and reel this one in. Ooh. Uh, I will respond to Prince once I've done the video. 
All right, there we go. And what helps at times as well is you click right mouse button, wait until it drops, then you let go of the right mouse button and you start reeling in. Now, of course, he is trying to get away from us again. There we go. This way, mate. This way. No, look at that tension on the rock. Look at that tension. <laughs> Ooh, my rot is going crazy. All right. So but that is how you try uh, to direct a fish. I know that, of course, with this one, we have chewed a bit of, a bit too much. Fish like this is uh, definitely taking a run for it. It will be very hard to reel it in. I, I'm always one of those type of fishermen that does not want to give up. Want to test and try. On the other hand, I also do not want to end up in a battle that takes like 30 real life minutes or even more. I've once been in a battle that took uh, a good couple of real life hours actually and that will just make your hand cramp up and especially when you lose the fish which would still be possible when all of a sudden it makes it run towards you or when you uh, get low line tension, stuff like that. Of course, that is never ever fun when that happens, especially when you're battling it for that long. But still, it might help. Also, what might help from time to time is just put the rod into the water. Now, this is just something that you sort of trial and error learning. Uh, you, you somewhat get a feeling for when it might work and when not. I get a feeling that here it is not working a whole a lot though. I do get to reel it in a bit, but yeah, there it goes off again. So then better is it to keep the rod into the air. But yeah, you guys can already see that my reel is now down to 94% so it will become a cost and a fact case uh, currently do I want to reel in this fish even though it is damaging my setup very heavily and I would have to pay for it is it worth the money to do that to have a fish damage uh, my setup so severely or would it just be better to uh, leave it be? And in this case, for me, it is not rewarding enough. Uh, the fish will give you one bay coin, but all in all, uh, and like I said, uh, one bay coin will not help me repair my gear. I will give it one more try. But the moment it goes back to 40, I'll just give in and break my line. Now, for those of you guys that want to know more about, uh, he's going there, so we are going to cut the line. For those of you guys that want to know about where, but what type of setup do I use, and and uh, how do I uh, put, uh, what reel do I put on what type of, uh, on what type of uh, rod, all the kind of stuff. If you guys go to the forums of Fishing Planet on Steam, there is actually. A, uh, so you click on uh, discussions that is actually the uber sheep project let me show it to you guys here we go second screen uber sheep project click on this one click on the link here uh, docs.google.com it will actually pop up a, a google document actually let's just do it like so actually pop up a Google document and here you guys can see 
Uh, this is uh, the reels and the drag setting. How much kilogram or pound it would put on uh, as strength onto the reel and onto the line. So here it has max drag setting of, uh, for instance, this Calisto MG2500. Uh, drag set to 1 gives you a strength of 0.58 kilograms. Drag set to 2, 1.17. Drag set to 3, 1.75. Drag set to 4, 2.33. Uh, drag set 5, 2.92 uh, and drag set on 6, so max 3.5 kilograms. Now, if we go down below here, it says spin real drag. Here we got cast real drag. Here we got balanced combinations, and that is the one that you want to go after. Here it says, uh, gives you some info on what type to use and what not so much to use. So, for instance, an uh, Argo uh, 6.3 inches or Argo 190, that one would be very well with a Cyclone 4500, uh, a Counselor 3500P or the VBO. Now, you could use the Attorney, uh, but here it says that in this color, included to match level of rods, but not a recommended setup. So, here it shows that. Uh, you can use them, but they are not recommended. Now, in this particular uh, document, there is a whole lot more stuff going on. Like here, here below, it says preferred lures and baits. So here, you can see the preferred lures and baits for, uh, say, a unique black crappy. So a gold or silver casting spoon number two, or a perch and spoon number one, a hook number two size, and leeches or wax, worm, wax worms. Uh, location summary. So you get a summary of what type of fish that are on locations. Of course, we already can see this in game as well. And then if you click, for instance, on Texas, here you can see the peak hours, the type of weather days, and um, I guess that these would indicate unique peak hours. Uh, these ones, and so on and so forth. You can just scroll through each and one of them. This will definitely help you in preparing your setups prior to you going to a uh, new lake. Um, like I said before, if you know that there is a fish out there um, that does some, uh, some serious uh, damage. Uh, for instance, you want to hook, um, say, uh, say one of uh, uh, a Chinook salmon. Uh, and you want to float fish it. Now here we got a Brutus, a uh, gold pot, and a green beer, and uh, another Brutus. These all have a max capacity of either 50.5 kilograms or 15 kilograms. Uh, like I said earlier on, uh, the rods uh, give you a, a determination in what type of, um, how, how strong, uh, how much weight they can handle, and uh, you can always use them to catch the heavier fish, but to a certain extent. So, for instance, what I did earlier over here with this Nero setup, it has a max of 5.5 kilograms with a leper, uh, uh, a roadie bass on it that goes up to 13 kilograms. This simply will not do the job. However, if you get a Nero 450, that one can handle 6 kilograms, and with that one, you can actually do. Uh, you can actually handle uh, handle the roadie bass, but you will need a different reel for it. This one has a max rack of four kilograms. You want to have a reel that has a max rack of five kilograms. You will still struggle. It will still take time to uh, to reel them in, but at least you can, you will be able to uh, to reel those uh, those type of fish in. So okay, guys, um, I think I've covered it all or at least uh, the basics and the concepts to you. So, uh, tackle and technique. Uh, like I said, there will be more uh, in-depth technique videos about the retrievals. Uh, I'll upload them after I've uploaded all the vids of uh, this particular series. I hope that these videos, these uh, four or five videos, have helped you in understanding what you need to know and what you need to discover when you're going to a new lake for the very first time and how for you you can become less dependent on uh, on folks like myself uh, but uh, also on, on uh, other fishermen uh, out there and on, on uh, place of fishing planet this will help you 
term and in um, help you actually in, in learning the game yourself, finding the fissure on your own, uh, see what works and what doesn't, and that all when it comes together, in, at least in my opinion, is very more rewarding than when you're just following uh, every video out there and uh, just copycat what the rest of, uh, of the folks are doing. So um, with that I am uh, leaving you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. So remember SPOT, SPOT, Structure, Preference, Observation, Technique and Tackle. That is all what it is about. Um, if you have any questions feel free to leave them down below. Uh, give a comment. Uh, also if you like this video give it a like. Do not forget to subscribe to my uh, YouTube channel and if you want to watch me play Fishing Planet live in the details down below you will see the link to my uh, Twitch channel. I uh, tend to stream Fishing Planet twice a week at least on Monday. That is my fixed steady Fishing Planet night and start 8pm GMT plus 1 and then it's either Wednesday or Thursday that I stream Fishing Planet as well. Uh, keep an eye out there for me on uh, Twitch. Uh, come join me and say hello in the chat. We'll, uh, we'll have a talk there. And that's it. So I'm going to wish you guys happy days, tight lines, and I'll see you later. Bye bye.